What's up everybody, my name is Nate. Welcome to the channel. This is a perfumery making video if you're interested at all at making your own perfumes. These are gonna be the 10 recommendations for ingredients that I would suggest you get. So there's a ton of different ingredients um, out there on the market for perfumery making. A great resource is uh, the Perfumer's Apprentice. That's where I pick up a lot of my ingredients. Um, but I wanted to share with you 10 here, um, and this would just kind of start you out on a, on a good note. Um, a lot of good different ingredients here that you can craft into some good perfumes here and there. Um, obviously there's a ton more on the market. Try different things out, but these, I'm gonna maybe do an, a few follow-up videos to this, but uh, these are the first 10 that I would suggest you get. The first one on the list would be ISOE Super. ISOE Super is a must in modern perfumery and um, I would suggest you get a lot of it. ISOE Super has this like cleanness about it. It's pretty um, warm and fuzzy, um, but it's mainly this woody floral kind of ambergris kind of thing. As you can see here on, this is the Perfumer's Apprentice. Um, it's not terribly expensive. I would suggest you go for, uh, you know, a lot. The 500 grams here is 32 bucks. I would probably suggest if you're looking into getting into perfumery a lot, I would suggest you get the 500 grams or the 250. I think this is a 250 gram here. So um, it's definitely worth it because you're gonna be using ISOE Super a lot if you wanna create like designer kind of style fragrances. But basically ISOE Super acts as like a base of your fragrance. So you wanna, you wanna have like 20% of ISOE Super in your formulas to make it kind of this designery kind of thing. Uh, you can go all the way up to 30, 40% of ISOE Super, and that's gonna give it kind of this warm, fuzzy, woody feeling. So the more ISOE Super you add, uh, the more woody, fuzzy it will come across. But ISOE Super would be uh, the number one I would suggest you get. The next one I would highly suggest you get, this one is kind of like a florally, it, it brings a lot of lift and life to the fragrance. And this is Hedion, and this is the H, no, this is just the original one, but they also have an HC version, which is high cis, and it just acts as like a brighter, fresher take on Hedion. Here you have the HC version, which is just a little bit more, from what I gather, it's just a, it's a lot fresher and sharper than the reg regular Hedion. But Hedion, um, you could go with HC or you can go with just a standard Hedion. I would suggest you just get this. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a transparent floral note. It also brings a lot of lift and life to your fragrance um, with still having that like floral jasmine-y kind of thing. You typically want to add, you know, like 10 to 20 percent Hedion if you're doing a lot of like citrus in your fragrances or a lot of florals this amplifies the florals a lot and it gives life to your fragrance this one too i would suggest you get the 500 grams or the 250 grams just to have because you're going to be using a lot of Hedion. Um, it's not like a specialty kind of ingredient um, it's more you're going to be using a lot of it within your formulas. Hedion and ISOE Super are typically the two highest dosed in any kind of perfumery um, in terms of like designer fragrances. If you're wanting to do some different stuff, you know, obviously, you know, by all means do that. But Hedion and ISOE Super are a must. The next one I would really suggest you is a musk and the next two we're gonna talk about are musk, but uh, this is ethylene brassolate. Ethylene Brassolate is a great musk and it's almost got a florally with a vanillic amberette kind of smell to it. It's really quite pleasant. This is one of my favorite musks that I own. It's got a little bit of a powdery nuance as it says here on uh, Perfumer's Apprentice, but it's mostly sweet florals with this hint of a vanillic undertone. Uh, it's mostly musky though. It's when you dose it quite high, you get this kind of musky woody kind of smell, which is really just divine. It's one of my favorite musks and it's so easy to work with. It's such a easy musk. 
Once again, this is a this is an, ingre an ingredient that you want to buy a lot of um, because it's a musk, and typically musks too um, have a high dosage. So if you can if you can get your musk up to 20%, I know that might sound like a lot, but when you're blending and stuff, 20% is not all that much. 20% musk, so you want to have a lot of it. So I would once again suggest you get like the 500 grams or the 250 grams so that you have a lot of ingredients to start blending with. That's the only recommendation. That's why I would suggest you get that much just off these, uh, you know, ingredients because you're going to use a lot of them. Let me move. But ethylene bracelet is one of the best. The next musk I would suggest is galaxolide. And so the galaxolide is this really sticky resin. I can't even get the cap off. That's how sticky it is. So it's a, it's a really sticky fixative. This typically makes your fragrance last a long time and it's musky. It's got a musky undertone in it, but it's really good. Um, and it's great with longevity and stuff. And it usually comes in two different, you can buy them in two separate things. You can buy the 50% dilution or you can buy the neat version. This is the neat version here that I have. And so uh, basically what this is, it's very sticky. It's hard to work with though. So you have the 50% here and then on the other side you have the neat version. So whenever you're ordering, make sure that you either get, if you don't wanna dilute anything, make sure that you get the 50% um, so that it's a lot easier to work with. But in terms of price too, you, you kind of want to buy more of this, like the musks and these big fixatives like Isoe Super and Hedione, those are typically stuff that you want to buy a lot of. Get, get a lot of that so that you have, you know, a lot to build out bases with. And then for all your specialty ingredients, like say some spice, like nutmeg or elamine, you would typically only buy little traces of that. So like maybe 15 milliliters of that or four milliliters of that, some really low dosages. And um, cause you're only gonna be adding in a little bit of that uh, through, you know, in your fragrances. Um, Glaxolide here is a little bit more expensive. So I would say just get 50, 50 grams of it. That's 11 bucks and uh, that should go a long way, especially when it's neat. Because uh, what I typically do is I dilute this down to 50%. And so, you know, 50%, you're doubling it. So it's almost like five, $5.50 for, you know, uh, 500 grams of it, so, or 100 grams of it, sorry. Let's talk about some woods. So I would suggest you get some cedar wood and I have cedar wood Texas here. Cedar wood oil is great. This Texas has like this a, a bit smoky vibes to it, um, but I love Texas cedar wood. And then I also like Virginia. I have not tried Atlas yet. Atlas is a lot smoother and richer from what I know. But Cedarwood Texas is great and you know you can use this in small traces and get yourself a nice cedar accord. Typically what you do with perfumery is you use Isoe Super, like 20% Isoe Super, and then you use 5% Texas Cedarwood and it gives this beautiful cedar accord. So you wanna use more Isoe Super and less Cedarwood and then those will morph into this beautiful woody character. But cedar wood here, you know, you can get 50 grams of it for 10 bucks. That's a pretty good deal, I think. And bergamot oil is really, really sought after in perfumery. It's one of the most well-known citrus oils that they use in perfumery. And, um, but it's heavily regulated because it, it reacts to the sun, pretty much. You can buy it in BF version, which is they, they remove the molecule that's in the oil that reacts to the sun. Um, but I like to use this oil. It's a reconstruction of bergamot, but it's bergamot Jivco. And bergamot Jivco here is really, really nice. It smells like bergamot. It's fresh and clean, and it's just delightful. This one has um, the mixture in here is linenol and at linenol acetate, kind of like balanced out. There's a few more ingredients in here too, but it's mainly those two with some citronellin in here. Um, so it's just a mixture and it's pretty much just like a replacer. So you can use this instead of bergamot oil. And from what I know, it's pretty cheap too. Uh, yeah, like here, the 50 grams of it is $13. And I would suggest you get 
a little bit more, a little bit, you know, get a lot of this because bergamot is pretty much in everything and this freshens up any formula. If you put this in any formula, it freshens it up. So um, 50 grams is good, 13 bucks, that's not too bad. Um, and then it kind of jumps up there in price. Wow, look at that. But Bergamon Jivco is is really nice and I, I use it in almost every one of my blends that I'm like doing or whether I'm doing like a vanilla spicy fragrance or a, you know, a fresh floral or a fresh zonic fragrance, I use it in almost everything. Um, let's talk about uh, spicy. I would actually go with some pink pepper. This is just pink pepper oil. And this is one of those ingredients too that you don't need a whole lot of. I mean, if you if you got the 15 mil, the, the small size, the 15 mil size, that's pretty much the standard small size for perfumery. But if you get one of these, you won't really run out of it for a very long time because uh, you, you typically don't wanna use too much of the pink pepper because then it's just gonna give this pink pepper kind of vibe. Um, so small traces of this, I'm thinking like if you put in if you put in, you know, one gram of Isui Super, you would want to put in like maybe one drop of this because it's so potent and powerful. Prices are not too bad on it too, but they are a little high, but you don't need a whole lot of it to get the job done. Another wood I would suggest you get is some patchouli. And there's a bunch of different kinds of patchouli out there. You have a bunch of different like versions and distilled versions and clean versions, just pure oils and stuff. And patchouli can come across very dirty, very earthy. And uh, the one I really like is clear wood. And clear wood is kind of just a like a refined version of patchouli. It's pretty like soft woody, and but it still has that patchouli-esque kind of vibe. It is still a little dirty. It's not like a total like clean, clean version of patchouli, but definitely nice. And you only use a little bit of this because this one is regulated a little bit in the IFR ratings and stuff. So you don't wanna use a, a whole lot of it. You just wanna kind of like sprinkle it in. But once again, you know, you go back to your ISOE Super, if you put in 20% of your formula into ISOE Super and you put in maybe 3% clear wood, you're gonna get this overly abundant, you know, patchouli kind of character. And then if you add say 3% clear wood and you add 8% Texas cedar wood, and so it's like 28 and three, you have this beautiful, woody accord for your perfume. Another one I would suggest you get is some frankincense and I just have frankincense olibanum from Fragrance Apprentice and I'm not sure how clean or you know how authentic this stuff is but I, I find it it really works well in my formulas that you know there's probably there's probably farms and people who actually like specialize in making frankincense that have such a rich frankincense. And that's what I'm learning and exploring with fragrances is getting the best quality materials is always, always the best option when you're mixing oils and stuff. So um, I'm not sure how high quality this is, but um, from my testing and my blends and stuff, I find it is really nice. So, and this frankincense is a little bit more pricey than than like Hedion or anything like that. Um, it's 15 mils for $15. It's not terrible, it's not ter and you only need a little bit of it um, to really give your fragrance a good, solid, like frankincense kind of smell to it. Um, so, you know, it's definitely worth, even if you wanna just try it out, maybe the four mil, but still seven bucks is a lot for four mils. Of All right, dihydromersinol. This stuff is a must with any kind of fresh, or any kind of like standard men's fragrance that when you smell this, you'll know what it smells like because it smells like that lavender lime shave foam kind of smell. It's it's heavy, heavy, that kind of barbershoppy kind of vibe. And I love this stuff. So, I mean, I would suggest you get like a lot of it, but you don't really need all that much of it. Like, so say you have one gram in your perfume of Isoe Super, then you would want to do like uh, maybe 0.25% or 0.25 grams of dihydromersinol and it gives it kind of this fresh lavender kind of smell. 
mixed with that um, you know bergamot jib coat you get this beautiful fresh top that's just very lavender heavy but also fresh citrus and dihydromersinol also lasts quite some time too so it's a very fresh uh, kind of thing and the prices here are not that terrible either 50 grams of it is um, nine bucks and that's pretty good in my opinion so dihydromersinol is a great option for um, that traditional kind of cologne vibe you know the last ingredient i want to talk about is ambroxan you can't do perfume without ambroxan nowadays um, you don't really need a whole lot of ambroxan but i think it's good to have it's quite expensive um, but usually, typically in your perfume concentrate, you want this to sit at like one to 2%. Not a whole lot. You don't want a whole lot of embroxin because it, it definitely can get clawing. Um, so when you're up in the high percentages, but anyway, one to 2% of embroxin is usually really good for a formula. And I think this is worth mentioning here, but there's a bunch of different kinds of embroxin. You have like standard embroxin here at the top, and then you have embroxin that's um, diluted down to 10%, which I would try, I would avoid that one uh, just because, you know, you, if you get the regular version, you can always dilute it yourself, and it's good practice too. And then you have um, embrox DL, which is, um, it's like a higher quality. It's called, uh, I think it's called Sedlox, which is the technical term for it, but it's it's like a cleaner. I have a version of it over in my perfumery station, but this is really good if you want a higher quality Embroxin. But we're just gonna do standard Embroxin right now. And one thing worth noting is that Embroxin is crystals. So when you order this, you're going to be ordering grams and not milliliters. But it, this one is quite expensive, so $15 for a, a container like this size, which is not a whole lot, eight grams is not a whole lot of Embroxin, but 30 grams, $40. So you can see that Embroxin is quite expensive. And when you get down into the 500, you know, 500 grams of Embroxin is $500. Yikes. It's not as much as this. For four milliliters, $586. So you can see it gets pretty pricey. So this is not like a total list of everything you need. This is just 10 ingredients that I think you should pick up right away if you're looking into getting into perfumery. Um, obviously, you're going to need pipettes. You're going to need alcohol. And I would suggest you get a scale. A scale is quite important if you want to start taking it seriously. But I don't want to get into any of that right now. I just wanted to share with you 10 of the ingredients that I think are worth picking up if you're beginning your perfumer's journey. I love making perfume. It's one of my passions. I'm not really so super great at it, but I really, really like it. And any knowledge that I have about it, I love sharing it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. I'll get back to you with the best answer that I possibly can. And uh, thanks for watching the video and we will see you next time.